are watching tonight's Not Just Crew. Well, welcome back. Well, this is the interview I've actually been waiting to do for about four years now, pretty much ever since uh, Not Just Crew started. Uh, the next guest is going to be coming on, which I can say now is uh, Dr. Jen Parker or Dr. Jennifer Parker. I shall ask her what she uh, prefers to be called. She was literally one of the reasons we set up Not Just Crew, just to show uh, transferable uh, skills. Now, it's my absolute pleasure after nearly four four years since we started to actually introduce Jen Parker, and I still can't believe I'm saying it, absolutely love it, Dr. Jen Parker to our studio, just to tell us what it is being like, Dr. Jen Parker. I'm going to bring her in right now because I can't hang on anymore. Jen, <laughs> Dr. Dr. Jen, it's there in writing now, and you are now officially... Uh, a doctor. Now I'm trying to think. When not just crew started, and we're talking about four years ago. You in perhaps your what first or second year of being a doctor? Oh, uh, training to be a doctor. My second year then. Me, yeah, second, possibly going into third. Wow. Okay. And how many how many years has this taken altogether? So I, I've decided to take the uh, scenic route, uh, and it's taken me six and a half. Uh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it, it can take anywhere between four, five, six. Um, and, yeah, I've um, had a couple of hiccups along the way, but that's all right. It's all right. And, uh, yeah, so six, six and a half. Six and a half years. Now, that is real, real dedication. And be, before I go back a bit, what has kept your tenacity going throughout this entire six years? I'll say I'll talk about how you start it, but what, what's, what's kept you going? And especially not only kept you going, but you were literally uh, flying as well at, at the same time. Oh, good question. I think it's one of those things that when you've got a burning desire to do something, you just do it. Um, I can't really explain it. It's just always been there. It's It might not have always been a blazing fire. It might have been a tiny little bit of like a candle, but it's always been there. I've always had the passion, the drive to do it. And it's actually going in and talking to people and seeing patients and being able to do it. And as the years progressed, your confidence grows, your knowledge grows. I've always been a people person and that's that's been my, I suppose, kind of like go-to crutch because I know I can talk to people and I know that's a strength of mine. So for me, it was just building the knowledge up and then getting my confidence up to the same level as me being able to chat to people. But really, it was just having that end goal. Um, and I think because I was in a hospital, because I was in a GP surgery, because I was meeting people, it just fires you to just keep going. And yeah, you know, I, I had my down days. I've had my days where I thought, oh, my days, what am I doing? I'd so much rather be on the beach in barbs, choosing yeah. cocktails from a list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Right. we'll take it back a bit further then. What ignited that drive? You could have gone into so many different uh, careers from flying. What was it about becoming a a, a doctor? Now, I'm sure the, the ignition wasn't sort of serving breakfast at six o'clock in the morning on a full Barbados. Uh, and you say, no, I, I fancy being a doctor. What, did you always want to be a doctor since you were since you were young? No, I mean, yeah, it was definitely not handing out those cheeky little ham and cheese muffin things we used to do in my days. Um, no, I I knew I always was interested in something to do with medical care. Um, and I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, I, I don't come from a medical background, like no one in my family's medical, um, hardly anyone in my family's even been to university. So for me, the idea of medicine was was never in in my vision at all, and I didn't really think anybody like me would ever be able to do medicine, if that makes sense. Um, so it was honestly 
chance meeting people. Um, I think my first moment of, it's like a ripple effect, isn't it? Like my yeah. first moment of realizing that I wanted to do something to do with medicine or healthcare was during our AVMED training. And I just found it oh, well. so interesting. And I thought, yeah. wow, I love how hands-on it is. I love the equipment. I love that there's checklists. I love that there's guidelines. And yeah, that, that was the first thing that really did it for me. And then I think <laughs> the second thing was whenever we had a medical on board, I'd get a little bit excited. Yeah. And I was like, that's yeah. weird. <laughs> That's a little bit weird. Um, you know, everyone else is normally like, oh, my days. Ah. And I I kind of want to Trying to hide away. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. And so I, I, it kind of started from that. Um, yeah. And then it was just by chance meeting people, Trev. It was meeting people that were studying medicine and just being really inspired by them. And then wow. chatting to different people. And um, I think I might have mentioned it in, in my first ever interview with you, but the one lady that absolutely ignited my flame for medicine was this incredible lady called Kate. Um, she is a GP now and she basically sat me down and just said, I think you'd be excellent at this. You know, why, why aren't you going for it? And just listed all the reasons why I should. And she was the first person that made me think I could actually do this. And she changed the narrative for me because like most people maybe think, I mean, I, I certainly did. I yeah. honestly thought medicine was for people who were A-star students, whose, you know, dads and aunties and goldfish were all anaesthetists. And you had people there who, you know, almost a little bit nepotism kind of stuff you know like you yeah. you'd have someone that you'd be able to talk to and be inspired and then they'd help you leap forward so for someone like me I didn't have anything like that I didn't have anyone that I could go to for advice or talk to or so this incredible lady basically sat me down and helped me fill out all my UCAS statements and and applications and yeah she was the one that started the ball rolling um and then that was when we got on to talking about right how do i now apply yeah well this is this is what this was going to ask you it's not i mean even just applying for university is not the uh, easiest task anyway i remember that from myself but applying to a, uh, a medical school i had the pleasure of being a medical photographer uh, yeah. for a fair few years so I, I've, I've got a feeling what the medical uh Industry, do you call it an industry? The medical profession yeah. is, is, is like. Now, you sort of mentioned nepotism and families going in. So um, how did you actually find the process? Were, were you accepted straight away or was it a case of applying to um, uh, a few different medical schools? Just talk me just quite briefly through that. Yeah. Oh, with, with pleasure. So my entire journey from deciding, yeah, I'm going to apply has taken me roughly 10 years. Um, so I started really thinking about it um, way, way, way back, sort of like 2013, 2014. Um, and I decided that I still wanted to fly um mainly because i have a mortgage um and i needed to be able to support myself with that um and in a weird way i really still still love my job i still love flying it's a massive part of me and i didn't quite want to let go of it if i'm totally honest um so i got it in my head that southampton university was was the one i i wanted to go to because it just fit you know i'm a bournemouth yeah. girl got a house down there um and then that way i can i can commute up if i need to uh and easily get to heathrow and back so that that, that was my vision yeah. so i i obviously looked at other universities as well just because it's it's always good to have backup so i looked at um george um i looked at cardiff i looked at exeter i looked at brighton um yeah. But I'll be honest, the only one that gave me a bit of a chance looked like Southampton because they do love a bit of a mature student. They love somebody that's got something else about them. 
Um, whereas other medical schools were very, very, very academic focused and very, you know, A stars and A's and A levels. So I knew I was written out of a lot of those. Um, I didn't, I, I knew I wouldn't even get accepted to an interview. So I basically pinged a load of emails off to Southampton Uni, must have drove them absolutely crazy. Um, and just saying, look, you know, what do I need to do? I did a bit of research and found out to get back into university, I had to go and do my A-levels again. Yeah. Um, so I then went back to college. I got accepted onto something called an access to science course. Yeah. Uh, and essentially it was a, oh my God, it's, it's like like the, the VS3, the bullet New York we do. It is just rapid. Like you cover... Yeah. Um, so much. So I, I had to choose three subjects. So I chose biology, chemistry, physics. Um, and I, I spent from September till May um, studying those three subjects. And this was whilst I was flying full time. So, I was going to say, that's, that's quite an achievement in itself, just going yeah. back to study. Uh, well, not, we're, we're not talking about art and literature here. We, we are talking no. about ma major science, A-levels. Just one quick question. You know your access course, and I'm doing this just in case any other crew are interested. Did you previously have O-levels? Oh, showing my age here. Sorry, did you have um, whatever they are? Yeah, yeah, but no, the o -le did you have O-levels in those subjects before you went on to do the A-levels or GCSEs? Whatever they're sort of called um, now, I lose touch. So I did something called the International Baccalaureate after school. It's like oh, this right, okay. French um, yeah, like yeah. qualification of A levels, where um, it sounds a bit cray cray, but you basically do like six and a half, seven A levels um, instead of your like three or four. Because um, I couldn't decide what I wanted to do, so I decided to do seven. Um, so I did that, but I didn't realise that those have a shelf life. Um, and oh. when I went to apply to Southampton. They said, yeah, those have actually now expired. And I was like, how can an A-level expire? This is ridiculous. Yeah. But to be honest with you, because my subjects were so broad um, and I was always more arty than maths and science, which is, again, yeah. something that I put in the way, another pillar in the way of medicine. So, you know, I was doing Spanish and art and, you know, I did do biology, um, but I didn't do it at a high enough level. So, yeah. I, yeah, so I, I then had to go and, and choose a course that I knew was going to guarantee me enough points to be able to get to interview. So there is another course now called an access to medicine. And yeah. there's only a select number of colleges that do this. I'm sure that there's a, a college in, in Sussex that do it. Um, and the great thing about these is they are direct feeders into their local university in the area so you are pretty much guaranteed an interview at a medical school which is huge because just yeah. to get an interview in itself is is massive well, that's, um, that's, quite, that's quite an achievement in, in, in itself as i remember for the days working for the institute of orthopedics and uh, university college uh, london and seeing all these uh, potential uh, medical uh, undergraduates coming in and uh, a lot of them sort of uh, leaving or, or not getting in um, just to take you a bit forward right so you, you studied these these um because i know I, what you don't what the viewers don't realize is that you have literally just worked a uh, a, a night shift and I, I i don't know how you've got the energy i'm hoping your cabin crew training pro probably probably helped in that slightly so you've gone through these years we've uh, had a couple of interviews with before you've been on the shows and we've always been impressed and say you've actually where you want to be now um i have to go down the emotional route here what was it like opening that bit of paper or was it on a board how did you actually find out you had passed your final exam to become uh dr jen loads of letters but after your name so just to give you a bit of background yeah i i haven't found my medical school journey easy i haven't i have i've not drifted through like i have scraped and held on with my fingertips at times i've had to repeat two years and it's been a really emotionally exhausting and fulfilling journey so every single year of med school that i've done i have had to do resits 
So this basically means that I didn't get the pass mark the first time round. It's not 88%, was it? Uh, it's certainly not. <laughs> I'm joking. Just funny enough. <laughs> airline, comparing <laughs> airlines there. That's sadly not. <laughs> Um, although I still to this day say those virgin exams are pretty much on par. But anyway, yeah. so I I have really struggled with with medical school exams. Um, you know, I've I've never lied about it. I've I've you know I've always been very open about it. Um, it's not necessarily my knowledge, it's my confidence in picking the knowledge when you're in the exam room and going, Oh, I'm sure it is that, but oh what if it isn't? So it's always been a confidence thing with me. So this year I, I could, I could still remember it. So I, I, we were getting the results on um, leap day because it's a leap year. Um, so on the 29th of Feb, we were getting these results, and I remember them being, you know, we sent an email saying you could get it from anywhere from um, nine in the morning until three p.m., which is a huge, you know, it's like standby, isn't it? You're like, oh my gosh, that's it's like waiting for Christmas rosters. Honest, yes, it actually is. <laughs> honestly, so. I, my, my granddad, God love him, he um, FaceTimed me and we had this little FaceTime um, and he said to me, you know, whatever happens, I'm proud of you, whatever, because, you know, he knows my track record. So, and I'm there, sat there going, oh, granddad, you know, I really, I really don't think I've done this, but, you know, it's okay, I'm queen of resits, it's fine, I'll just, you know, I'll, I'll just resit them, um, it, it will be okay. So, anyway, I'm sat there. Um, crocheting because i'm such an old lady now wow and, um, no 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 that's the end thing friend. my, my <laughs> missus she's messing in since yeah since uh a hooker uh since um oh, yeah since <laughs> covid she started yeah she, she started crocheting and uh yeah yeah it's uh it's like an international it's sport now wonderful it's very yeah. therapeutic so yeah so there i am crocheting this blanket and um and then my phone pops up and it was really odd i had this very kind of it's the initial uh, you know like when your phone goes off and it's crewing and then i just felt this almighty calm and i just said to myself look it, it is what it is and trev i opened this email and it comes up as you know dear jennifer um please find below your results blah 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 blah. if you've not yeah. passed then you'll be sent an email blah, blah, blah. and i was just and honestly this email is yeah. like and you've got to scroll 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 scroll, scroll and then open up this separate attachment and then it it comes up and I was looking for fail, fail, yeah. fail. And I saw pass, pass, pass. And then my scores down the bottom for all of my different things. Excellent, 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 excellent. And I honestly just froze. I was like, no. And I had to keep going up and down this piece of paper. And I was thinking, no, this, this can't be right. This can't be right. Oh. I then screenshotted it and sent it to one of my friends who is a doctor <laughs> and bless her she was on holiday in Amsterdam and I called her up and I was like I'm so sorry I'm so sorry to wake you up but could you please just read the message that I've just sent you because I I don't know if this is actually what it says it is anyway and she just screamed down the phone she was like oh my god you're a doctor and honestly Trev I just burst into tears because it was it was just all the emotions like everything at once you know relief um shock excitement yeah. absolute petrification if that's even a word probably not keep making words up there's a new it's a new um, word oh yeah we'll, we'll just we'll roll it um <laughs> and i just yeah i i allowed myself to sort of i came off the phone to her and I, I just, you know, and you just feel so warm. And I just, I, I couldn't, and to be honest with you, I still can't believe it. I still cannot believe I'm going to be a doctor in August and I'm going to be on the wards and people are going to be coming up to me and being like, oh, and Dr. Jen, you please do this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, people are going to suddenly, I mean, your, your, your life is, is, is going to change, which I'll talk about in a sec. Just one quick question on the uh, emotional side uh and i experienced this and it's no it's not anywhere near your level at all but i remember uh just passing my uh driving tests and even when i finally went part-time um and even paying, paying off the the mortgage here these are goals that i'd had for such a long time and i put everything into them and when i 
finally passed, I've got to admit, for a couple of days afterwards, I actually felt a, a bit down. And I, I, I never understood it. It's, it's like you've worked so hard. Uh, I'll give you an example of the mortgage. I've worked so hard to pay this mortgage off. I rang up. The whole call was over in five minutes. And I should have been leaping around. Well, that's what I expected would happen. I'd be leaping around. And I didn't. For the next couple of days. I love it now, by the way. Um, but next couple of days, I actually felt a bit down. I was the same with my driving tests. When I finally sort of uh, uh, went but it went part time. Did, did you have anything like that at all, or was it straight back back into medical work? I suppose. Oh, absolutely. I. It's one of those things, and I've said this a lot to people who've met me along the way. When you're studying for something, or you've got a goal in something, it becomes your whole life. So if if I was. If I ever had any downtime, which was very rare, I would spend that revising or watching a medical podcast or uh, watching some kind of YouTube thing or doing quizzes on some random app on my phone. If I was on Instagram, my pages were filled with medical pages where I'd just be looking at stuff. So I never really gave my brain a rest. And being a recent queen, I never really had any holidays because yeah. I would do my exams there'd maybe be like a three-week period after my exams where I'd then be waiting for results and then I'd get the results which were usually a fail and then I'd be straight back onto the revision train ready for my resets in four to six weeks later so for me it actually made me feel a little bit sick not having anything to do with medicine anymore it made me feel mm. guilty um, yeah. I felt lost. I felt really down. Yeah, I did. I was like, I've lost. I, I, I've, I've achieved this goal now. What, what do I do now? And yeah, I, I don't think I ever. I'll be honest, and I've said this to you a million times, haven't I? I genuinely never thought I would actually pass med school. I really didn't. And. Even now, I still can't believe I've done it. There's still a little bit of imposter syndrome, which is something that I'd love to do a talk on with you another time. Yeah, oh, um, because I think that is definitely. a huge thing in itself. Yeah. And so many of my doctor friends and medical school friends as well in other years, we all suffer from it. And I think crew do as well, to an extent. Um, and yeah, you know, it's, it's it's hard it's hard adjusting to go 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 you know it's, it's like when yeah. you've, you've been flying and flying and flying and flying and flying and then all of a sudden you've got two weeks leave and you actually well, it's, yeah you just like get ill <laughs> yeah yeah well it's exactly like, yeah and everything for like, my oh, first like, oh. <laughs> yeah well my first two months of part-time uh most people knew how much i was looking forward to it as they've been flying full-time for 28 years oh, I mean, and the job i was gonna do for years is um the first two months i was really quite unwell uh just exhausted more exhausted than sort of flight two days off um yeah. you know so uh but i'm, I'm feeling the benefits now and yeah. hopefully hopefully you will Do, one quick question um each time you failed uh those exams uh i won't say failed because you never failed you, you you literally just didn't pass that time how did you pick yourself up because to say you, the, the amount of study you're going through is so intense and it must be a drain um, I know you got, eventually got used to uh, resitting, but how did you pick yourself up each time? Oh, um, because I had such an incredible support network, I honestly could not have done this without my friends. I mean, yeah, I one of my best friends, Tom Dobson, absolute king. Poor, poor man. I don't know how he's still friends with me because the amount of messages that I would send, you know, oh, I'm clearly not good enough, blah, blah, blah. And he would, it would just be a constant, Jen Parker, yes, you are. You're going to be a doctor. You're amazing. And to be honest, I think I'm, I'm going to give myself a bit of credit, which is a very rare thing. I don't, I don't. Yeah, I think, yeah give yourself a little but bit. I feel like I've made, wherever, wherever I go, I seem to make a really positive impact on people and I get incredible feedback from nurses, from doctors, from HCs, from cleaners, you know, just every department that I've worked in, people have said, oh my gosh, 
I've absolutely loved meeting you. You're a breath of fresh air. You're a beam of sunshine. And that's been really integral for me because I've been in a world where I'm pitted against the most insanely clever people. And I know I'm not an insanely clever person. You are. You just I, don't know it. I, I'm definitely <laughs> not. But I know that I am a very driven and resilient and caring person and I'm very focused and when I set my mind to something and I'm passionate about it it becomes everything so for me it's been the friends I've met along the way my friends that have been here since day one and you know I've honestly I, I just I couldn't name all of them you know my amazing friend Sarah who's crew for us you know, she just, she just messaged me and be like, let's just meet up and have, you know, DCs and donuts and we'll just talk about it and it'll be fine. And she, she's just been beautiful. And, you know, my yeah. best friend from school, um, oh, she, yeah, she just be like, look, you know, she voice note me or come around or like, I'm here, it's okay. Um, and then I think the turning moment for me was in year four when I failed my exams by one mark. I think you messaged and, me regarding that. I, I yeah. seem to remember. And, oh. and that, for me, was a really yeah. dark moment because you're stuck between this whole, yeah. it's one mark, but, oh, I'm not good enough. And you, it's almost worse one mark than yeah. you know, 20 marks because yeah. then you're like, oh, if I'd have just not changed that answer. But actually... I do think sometimes things happen for a reason because through that, I then managed to get in touch with, well, he got in touch with me actually, this incredible doctor who's a pediatric ICU consultant at Southampton General. And he basically messaged me and said, can we have a chat? I've seen your results. Can we have a Teams meeting? And we had a Teams. And he basically, after this team, sent me this absolutely beautiful email saying, do you know what, Jen? I've been doing this for years and I've never met anyone like you and I just want you to know that I'm here for you and I want to to celebrate you and I want to support you so he became my mentor for my repeat fourth year and it, it, honestly just the love I feel for this man like he's just such yeah. a beautiful beautiful person and he didn't have to do that you know, he's got plenty of things, you know, he's got incredibly sick kids to be looking after. But it's it's people like that along the way. And also, you know, I I had to reach out at times and say, look, I'm struggling with this. Could we have a chat? Could we do this? And I think that's what it is. It's it's learning where your threshold is and thinking, right, what are my resources here? What can I do about it? Is this all doom and gloom? Am I actually trying to achieve something that is completely, you know, on on Pluto somewhere? Or actually, am I just overthinking this and I just need a little bit of, of love and a confidence yeah. boost? So, yeah, I've, you know, believe me, there's been times when oh. <laughs> I've, honest to God, wanted to pack it all in. Yeah, but yeah. A lot of that is ego, I think, because, you know, nobody likes to fail. Nobody likes to, you know, look stupid or dumb or or turn around and go, mm, you know, I tried this and actually it didn't really work out. And you come back with, you know, your tail between your legs. Um, but, yeah, well, I've just always had that little. Yeah. Well, I, I'm, so, I'm so glad you did, you did come back. Um, and uh, obviously a lot, a lot of crew, and I think we've asked you this before uh, on the uh, shows and, and on the uh, podcast. How much do you think your experience as crew, uh, whether it be shift, shift work, uh, multitasking, even though we sort of hear that's not a thing now, how, mu how much has that helped you uh, through your journey at medical school? Oh, one million trillion percent. I would not be here as a doctor without having been crew first. And I, I would do this journey 10 times over um, if it meant that I'd have my crew journey first. Um, it has molded me into the person that I am today. And yeah, I think a lot of that is, is the um, like unpredictable, you know, patterns of shifts and things. And, you know, the, the long hours, the mixture of people that you meet, 
yeah. everything that I've done as crew has in some way, shape or form helped pave my medicine journey a hundred percent. Yeah, it's 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 honestly uh, well, I'm so glad you had, just really, really briefly, because I know we're running out of time and you need to get to the bed, young lady. Uh, <laughs> that's that's the daddy me come, come, come out now because I know you have been up uh all night. Um uh, I've lost my train of thought now. Oh yeah, um, how how do your competitors, not competitors, sorry, your your other colleagues, um, were they doing anything like that in their background, or did they literally come from different different eras of society? Had any of them else been sort of crew? Yeah, there's a real mix. You know, I had um, there's there's a guy in my year who came from the Marines, and he's doing his medical training through the Navy, which I think is absolutely amazing. Um, but yeah. A lot of people have done degrees before, um, like a really popular degree would be like biomedical science, um, yeah. something like that, you know, some, something science-y, so then it helps sort of, but yeah, most most people were, are the stereotypical, you know, went to school, got incredible GCSEs, incredible A-levels, you know, there's some form of relative that's, yeah. that is a doctor. But no, there, there wasn't anyone that I met who, who, um, who decided to be crew and and at school at the same time. Yeah, amazing. Okay, <laughs> I, I, I can see the clock's getting down. Another quick question: uh, When I messaged you to try and even arrange this interview, you were busy with some kind of air ambulance stroke helicopter. Just tell oh. us about that. That's, that sounds amazing. Oh my god. I've got, I've got my lanyard here. I'll show you this. I don't know if you can see it. Like, yeah. Oh, oh, look at that. So I am with this absolutely incredible charity called Magpass. Um, so it's an air ambulance based in sort of like East, um, like in Midlands, um, up in a, a place near Huntingdon in Cambridgeshire. Um, yeah. Absolutely phenomenal charity. And um, they've just changed base as well, which is great. Um, sadly, they don't have uh helicopter at the moment uh which is a bit a bit of a shame um but to be honest with you it's probably quite a good thing that my feet are on the ground instead of yeah. you know, a thousand feet up in the air but yeah essentially they are critical care doctors and paramedics um phenomenal people phenomenal i mean they are pretty much like I fit in really well because it's like being in the gatehouse and in, in the crew room, you know, they're just really incredible, like-minded people. And they're just so friendly and so engaging and so willing to have me there. Um, so I, I'm basically an observer. So I go out in the cars with them when they get a 999 call. So we go on blue light calls um, and it, it could be to anything. It could be to um, a car crash. It could be to um, someone choking. Um, yeah, it could be to a really, really unwell baby. And essentially, we go out and um, support the ambulance road teams. Um, and then when they had a helicopter, they'd obviously then fly them off. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, so well, that, that was what I was doing last night, my night shift. <laughs> yeah, this, this is what I mean. It's, it's, it's a, uh, amazing. So um, it's this, you say you volunteered. Is, is this unpaid work? Yeah, so, um, so what we all do uh, after we finished med school is something called an elective. So yeah. back in the day, this would basically be a chance for you to, you know, go to Bali for six weeks yeah. and just do a bit of medicine but also have some downtime because you know yeah. having done five six years of med school you need a break um but funnily enough i was always like well i've done i've done my fair share of beaches and i don't yeah, think like, i need to do that <laughs> must be holiday for you, <laughs> you know, I just, yeah just request the saint lucia just go yeah. yeah yeah so uh in, in which they were all just groaning at me like oh Jen really so I decided that I wanted to do something to do with HEMS which is like helicopter yeah. emergency medicine and then yeah I met this incredible guy called Lee um, when I was volunteering as a patient um, for uh, an advanced trauma um, life-saving course thing uh, and yeah bless him he just said oh well I've you know I, I work for an air ambulance why don't you come down and do it do it with us so I just yeah absolutely jumped at the chance um really grateful such incredible learning experiences and um 
yeah, it's ignited another fire. So yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, I was gonna say now. So, um, from what I understand, you're gonna be sort of graduating and officially become a doctor in uh, August. And uh, I've definitely wanted you to come back on and once we've seen your graduation pictures and that lot. Um, are you looking to specialise? I know I've had these conversations before when you talk about becoming a uh, a, a GP, JP, GP. Uh, yes. So that, or are you gonna? Is there is there a certain um, what's the word speciality you would like to go into I've always I've always really really loved the idea of emergency medicine um so what magpas do is something called um fem which is PHM yeah. so it's pre-hospital emergency medicine um so I I really do like the idea of being first on scene it's probably the crew in me that you know we're first on scene so I'm just I feel like I'm just carrying this this on <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> I I've as you know, I have thought about the idea of GP. Um, the great thing about it is it's a really quick training um, yeah. process. So uh, that's that's always a plus. But to me, you know, I've just spent two years longer than I thought I was going to do on a medicine course, and which I've been putting off because I thought, oh, I'm far too old, you know, of 29 when I started med school. Wow. So I now at the age of 35, I am basically just trying to say to myself, let's just not put age on this. Let's not put a time on it. If I want to do something, I'm going to do it because as great as it would be to do GP, I think I would get more from emergency medicine. So yeah. um, I'm just looking into that that pathway now, just to see what my options are, really. Yeah, of course. I mean, that's that, I mean, that's always something you can go and see uh, your later. You've got to remember, I'm tw twenty years old, older than you. So uh, you know, when 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 you start to uh, creak and you haven't got quite as much energy, and your energy is absolutely amazing. I, I haven't met anyone who said, "Oh, um, who's dismissive." You're just just non non stop. We just don't know where you get the uh, uh, the the energy from so uh, well well done uh, on that. Um, you said you're working tonight, so I'm going to let you, let you get some let you get some sleep. Well, you've always thought that you're going to be a uh, a TV doctor. I, I think I said to you when you first mentioned it. I think one day you'll be on the TV. That's where I see your speciality as as well as everything else uh, oh. on that. So I, I hope I hope that comes true for you. I hope uh, so uh, as as well. Uh, I was going to say, hopefully, uh, in the next couple of months, you might jump on and uh, help us do a a program on the menopause, which we'll get That's loads of actually a request for. I won't be presenting it. It's totally out of my depth, even though I've got a house full of uh, females uh, here. Uh, but we'd love to have your your expertise or bring an expert in. But I, I want to see you on here as quickly uh, back on as, as uh, possible. Right, I'm going to let you get to bed. Uh, and I, I say, I, I feel I'm, I'm tired on your behalf, actually. It's, uh, you know, um, so how do, how do you just find it? How do you... Um, unwind after after a shift good question um to be honest crocheting has helped a lot yes <laughs> um <laughs> i i tend to just kind of i talk a lot as you can tell so Never. i i kind of talk it through with a lot of people i love a voice note love a cheeky vn so um yeah i i tend to sort of voice note my friends and that's almost quite cathartic because it's like talking to a counsellor isn't it you know yeah. you're getting it out and then but yeah I mean I I'll be honest I I'm not one of those people that really needs to wind down I I can honestly just keep going and going and going and going and going um and I don't know if that's just me or if that's because I've I've just got this goal in sight but I think ultimately I just love what I do. I absolutely yeah. love it. And yes, there's hard days. Yes, there's days where I do things where, you know, it's not as fun. Um, but ultimately I get into bed and I think, God, you know, I am so lucky that I've chosen to do this and yeah. I've been given so many chances and I've taken those chances and I've smashed it. And that is kind of my, my wind down in a way. <laughs> I bet you go to bed thinking, oh, I can't wait to go back to work. 
Well, this, to be this... honest now, I feel so fired up. <laughs> but I might go for a run. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this, this damn sleep gets in the way of everything. How, I how dare it? like a body pump or something in the lounge. Yeah. I'm, I'm really like, yeah. Wow. I'll tell you what, you, 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 <laughs> you go for it. Well, later. <laughs> well, I'm going to uh, let you go. I want you to come back on the show uh, oh, as, as quickly as possible, <laughs> honestly. We're Any absolutely time. loving what you do. As Sorry. I said before, well, this is you're yeah. one of the reasons we, what Not Just Crew is, is all about. Oh, and you're, you are absolutely I'm... living, living proof oh. of that. Well, on that okay. note, you know, thank you for your support. You've been like my main cheerleader from the get go. Well, thank you. And, um, honestly, like from the bottom of my heart, I've got so much love for you and just everything about Not Just Crew. You know, I'm a huge, huge, huge ambassador of. Oh, so very, much very fun. much so. And we, we hope to see you with uh, a mic in your uh, one of our mics in your hand again very, very soon. Oh, All right. Okay. Well, look, Dr. Jen Parker, thank you so much for joining us uh, today. As I say, it's been an absolute pleasure for me. Um, I have ever since I found out you've become a doctor, I've been trying to tie, tie, you, tie you down literally to say, look, just please, please come on the show. And uh, the fact you've done it straight after a night shift and you're going on another one tonight to me is absolutely amazing. All right, Jen, you get to bed and uh, we shall see you very, very amazing. soon. Thank you. Thanks so much, Trev. Take care.